What is up guys, the NFL Combine has finally come and gone and we've learned as much about these players as you possibly can in a single weekend with no one wearing pads. Sam Darnold did not throw at the Combine and that might have been the worst decision of the weekend. The other top quarterbacks were on fire. Saquon Barkley confirmed that he is just a freak of nature and more than worthy of the number one overall pick. All right, but I don't wanna waste any time with any extra stuff. Let's just get right into this mock. This is the second one I've posted to YouTube. The first one was posted a couple weeks after the Super Bowl and was based around Kirk Cousins signing with the Broncos. Sounds like the Broncos won't have enough cap space to sign him, so the Vikings and Jets are now the top options for him moving forward. If he wants to win a Super Bowl, I think he will sign with the Vikings, but I'm pretty sure he's interested in making a lot of money, and the Jets have even more cap space, while New York also gives him a chance to eventually turn his football career into a commentating career, which reportedly is something he's interested in. So. This round, we're gonna do a scenario if Kirk Cousins goes to the Jets. I did a seven round mock for the Browns that you should also check out, but obviously the first two picks would be flip-flop today as they are in this draft. Speaking of this mock draft, let's get it started already. All right, with the first pick, the Cleveland Browns select Penn State running back Saquon Barkley. It was debatable whether or not Barkley was in play for the number one overall pick before the scouting combine, but after he blew it up in Indianapolis, I really think the Browns are left with little choice if they want Barkley, then they have got to take him at number one because the Giants will be waiting for him at number two. With the second pick, the New York Giants select UCLA quarterback Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen not only nailed the physical aspect of the NFL Combine, but he also reportedly killed the interview process too, which was key for him, with so many people questioning his dedication to football. Rosen would actually do really well to sit behind Eli for a season and watch a consummate pro go to work. And I want to see him spend a lot of time in the weight room to get his body ready for the beating that is included in a 16-game NFL season. With the third pick, the Indianapolis Colts select NC State defensive end Bradley Chubb. Chubb secured his place as the number one edge rusher in the draft at the Combine. The Colts need as much help as possible and pass rush is undoubtedly the best place to build up some depth. But don't be surprised if the Colts are the first team to trade down in this draft because if the Browns take Barkley at number one, it's obvious they're taking a quarterback at four. So some team is going to want to have their pick of the remaining quarterbacks and jump in front of the Browns. With the fourth pick, the Cleveland Browns select USC quarterback Sam Darnold. The Browns somehow play their cards right and land their guy at number four after securing the number one prospect in the draft at number one two years in a row. Josh Allen and Baker Mayfield are definite possibilities here too. I don't really know who the Browns' number one guy is. All of these quarterbacks have their warts. All of them also have a lot of potential. We'll see who the Browns like. With the fifth pick, the Denver Broncos select Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield. The Broncos lose out on the Kirk Cousins sweepstakes, so John Elway decides to start completely over at the quarterback position. Baker Mayfield probably reminds John Elway of himself a little bit, except in a much smaller package, but the ability to scramble and a little bit of cockiness, that's right up John Elway's alley. With the sixth pick, the New York Jets select Notre Dame guard Quentin Nelson. The Jets are reportedly the favorite to land Kirk Cousins due to their ability to give him the most money, and they find themselves in a position to land the second best prospect in the draft at number six, which would be an ideal way to protect their new quarterback investment. With the seventh pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Alabama defensive back Minka Fitzpatrick. The Bucs are in a position to let the draft play out in front of them and still get the best defensive back prospect available. Minka Fitzpatrick didn't do anything to really wow you at the combine, but he did check all the boxes necessary. Fitzpatrick can be everything that the Bucs thought Vernon Hargrave was going to be. With the eighth pick, the Chicago Bears select Texas offensive tackle Connor Williams. This might seem high for Connor Williams, but he is the best offensive tackle in the draft, and the Bears really need to protect their young franchise quarterback. Williams showed that he's healthy again and is still an elite athlete at the NFL Combine. Teams will likely pay more attention to his 2016 than his injury play 2017. With the ninth pick, the San Francisco 49ers select Virginia Tech linebacker Tremaine Edmonds. At the NFL Combine, Tremaine Edmonds showed off what a freak athlete he is at 6'5", 250, and remember, he's only 19 years old. The 49ers could go in a number of ways here, but Edmonds is a beast that could play linebacker while also providing an edge rush. This is also the first place I could see Derwin James going in the draft, which is one of my favorite players in this draft class. With the 10th pick, the Oakland Raiders select Ohio State cornerback Denzel Ward. Going back to Ohio State for another first round cornerback is definitely a possibility for the Raiders. Ward is a smaller, faster corner compared to Gary and Conley and would give the Raiders a really good pair of corners to match up in their secondary. Ward would also serve as an insurance policy if Conley doesn't pan out after he had a very disappointing rookie season. Alright guys, and this is when it starts getting interesting. With the 11th pick, the Miami Dolphins select Louisville quarterback Lamar Jackson. So I'm going to be making a video about the top 5 players in this draft in 5 years time. And spoiler alert, 
Lamar Jackson is on there. Somebody mentioned the Dolphins as a potential landing place for Lamar Jackson in the comments below and it blew my mind. Jackson would really benefit from some time as a backup quarterback and the Dolphins are kind of stuck with Tannehill for the immediate future but with Tannehill being a mobile quarterback you could have a few similar packages installed in case Jackson needed to play in a pinch. Adam Gase is supposed to be an offensive mastermind but he'll need to redeem himself after costing the team 10 million dollars in the failed Jay Cutler experiment. Jackson would be a Miami star and give Gase a chance to get really creative. With the 12th pick, the Cincinnati Bengals select Georgia linebacker Roquan Smith. Now, I've been trying to replace Vontez Perfect for the Bengals in mock drafts for like three years, but now there's a guy like Roquan Smith on the board and a real linebacker need. I think this is the year they finally go for it. With the 13th pick, the Washington Redskins select Derwin James out of Florida State. Some people label Derwin James as the second coming of Sean Taylor, so it's fitting that he lands with the Redskins. Derwin James is another player that's going to be in my top 5 and 5 video coming out next week, but I also debated with putting Vita Vea here. With the 14th pick, the Green Bay backers select Iowa cornerback Josh Jackson. Josh Jackson is going to be the top cornerback in the draft for some teams, and the Packers could really use a guy that can create turnovers in the secondary. With the 15th pick, the Arizona Cardinals select Wyoming quarterback Josh Allen. So Larry Fitzgerald tried to recruit Kirk Cousins to Arizona, but sadly it looks like Fitz is going to finish his career with a subpar quarterback. But for a guy like Josh Allen, he can only hope to have a quality wide receiver like Larry Fitzgerald to begin his career with to kind of ease the transition from the Mountain West Conference to the NFL. With the 16th pick, the Baltimore Ravens select Alabama wide receiver Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley wasn't as physically impressive as I expected at the NFL Combine, and paired with his age, I don't think anybody's going to take him higher than this, but Ravens GM Ozzie Newsom loves him some Alabama players and could look past his age since, you know, he's retiring this season. That doesn't really factor in for him. With the 17th pick, the Los Angeles Chargers select Rashawn Evans. Rashawn Evans showed that he's an elite athlete at the NFL Combine and could rise up draft boards as the draft approaches. The Chargers have a very underrated defense and adding a leader like Evans right in the middle might be just what they need to bring it all together to become an elite unit. With the 18th pick, the Seattle Seahawks select defensive tackle from Washington, Vita Vea. I actually think that Vita Vea will be gone before pick 18, but if he's still there for the Seahawks, I don't see how they could pass on him. Seahawks are really just starting over on defense. They've already traded Michael Bennett. Otherwise, it doesn't really seem to be an offensive lineman worthy of 18, and the Seahawks just end up with the best player available here. With the 19th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Maryland wide receiver DJ Moore. Man, the NFL Combine was such a moneymaker for DJ Moore. A couple weeks ago, people were thinking he would go around the middle of the second due to his lack of size and average speed. But hey, after measuring in at 6 foot and 210 pounds and running a 4-4-3, he is clearly the number two wide receiver in this draft, possibly even the best wide receiver overall. But regardless of what happens with Des Bryant, Moore could be a great compliment to the possession guys that the Cowboys already have at wide receiver. With the 20th pick, the Detroit Lions select defensive end Marcus Davenport. Davenport showed that he is an NFL-level athlete at the NFL Combine, and I would be surprised if he's still available at 20 for the Lions. He's easily going to be the best fit for the Lions as the first-round edge rushers go, because the other top guys are likely going to be targeted by teams that run a 3-4 scheme. With the 21st pick in the draft, the Buffalo Bills select Alabama defensive tackle Deron Payne. I did consider Mason Rudolph here, but after showing up to the combine with 9-inch baby hands, there's just no way he could play in the cold weather of Buffalo, so the Bills are going to be forced to find a veteran quarterback to fill their need there. The Bills defense really suffered after trading Marcel Darius, so they have to go back to the Bama D-tackle well and select a freak athlete in Deron Payne. In the previous mock, Maurice Hurst was the pick here, but with his medicals being a question mark at the NFL combine, he is going to fall a bit. And with the 22nd pick in the draft, the Buffalo Bills select Ohio State center Billy Price. Eric Woods was forced to retire due to a neck injury, and the Bills are going to need to get a guy to fill the middle and start rebuilding their offense. Billy Price did injure his peck at the NFL Combine, but they reportedly said that he would be available for training camp. So I don't expect him to fall too much. If they don't feel comfortable with his injury, Iowa center James Daniels is a great option too. With the 23rd pick, the Los Angeles Rams select Boston College edge rusher Harold Landry. The Rams moved Robert Quinn to the Dolphins in a trade recently, and they need to replace him with an edge rusher that's a better fit for their 3-4 defense. Harold Landry is easily a top 20 talent, and I could see a team moving up in the draft to stop this fall for him sooner than 23, but the Rams could settle for Arden Key here if Landry is no longer available. 
With the 24th pick, the Carolina Panthers select UTEP guard Will Hernandez. The Panthers are likely going to lose all pro left guard Andrew Norwell to free agency, so they replace him with the second best guard in the draft. Will Hernandez showed that he's a legit NFL prospect at the Combine, and I was impressed with how agile he was for such a huge MFR. Some people probably prefer Isaiah Wynn here. I think both guys are going to be studs in the NFL, so whichever one you want here, I think the guard is the way to go, though. With the 25th pick, the Tennessee Titans select LSU edge rusher Arden Key. Arden Key is about as boom or bust as they come in this draft, and I don't know what's going on with his weight, but hopefully Mike Rabel can get him focused on football and he can really reach his full potential as a pro. With the 26th pick, the Atlanta Falcons select Georgia guard Isaiah Wynn. See, I told you I liked him too. The Falcons have one of the best rosters in the NFL, but they don't have to look far for a new guard to solidify their offensive line. There's not a lot of holes in their lineup, but they'll likely pick the best player available in the trenches, and Deron Payne is another option if he's still available here. With the 27th pick, the New Orleans Saints select Boise State linebacker Leighton Vander Esch. I had Dallas Goddard slotted here until I heard that Jimmy Graham was unlikely to sign with the Seahawks and so that trade the couple years ago ends up being one of the biggest hustles in NFL history because the Seahawks O-line has not been the same since and now Jimmy Graham is likely to return to New Orleans. That's crazy. Vander Esch was only a one year starter at Boise but I like this guy's intangibles and I think his best football is ahead of him. With the 28th pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Texas linebacker Malik Jefferson. The Steelers were weak at linebacker before Ryan Chazier went down with a potentially career-ending injury. They're going to have to find someone to man the middle of their defense. And even though Malik Jefferson played outside linebacker at Texas, I do think that he would translate well into a 3-4 inside linebacker. With the 29th pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars select tight end Dallas Goddard. Even if the Jaguars bring back wide receiver Allen Robinson, they should still look to increase their offensive weapons for Blake Bortles. If Robinson doesn't re-sign, Cortland Sutton would be a great pick here too. With the 30th pick, the Minnesota Vikings select Michigan defensive tackle Maurice Hurst. As far as medical issue goes, the NFL Combine was relatively quiet, but unfortunately for Maurice Hurst, he was diagnosed with a heart condition. Everything happens for a reason, and hopefully he can land in a good situation as he would with the Vikings. What happened with Sharif Floyd may scare them away from Hurst, but Taven Bryan would also be a possibility if that did scare them away. The 31st pick, the New England Patriots select Notre Dame offensive tackle Mike McGlinchey. The Patriots are likely to lose Nate Solder to free agency this year, and they'll need to replace him on the offensive line with Brady coming back for another year. Mike McGlinchey could have probably been a top 20 pick last year if he came out and was strangely overshadowed by his running mate, Quentin Nelson, this year, but is still one of the best offensive tackles in a weak draft class. With the 32nd pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Ohio State linebacker Jerome Baker. The Eagles are one of the deepest teams in the league, and it's tough to find a position of need for them to fill in the first round of the draft. But with the Achilles injury to Jordan Hicks, linebacker seems to be a place where they could afford more depth. And Jerome Baker is almost an identical clone to Jordan Hicks, so he seems like a natural fit there. All right, guys, thanks for checking out my mock draft. If you've made it this far, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be putting out some more stuff in the next couple weeks here as we get closer to the draft. It sounds like the offseason is going to be absolutely wild, so hopefully I can do some cool stuff with that too. Uh, make sure you check out my Twitter account or Facebook page if you guys aren't following me over there. That's usually where I'm at, and I will catch you guys in the next video.